Hi, my name is Michael. I want to throw my hat into the ring on this AI revolution and join the conversation because I think I have something of value to add. Um, I think there are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to AI, and I'm hoping that maybe this kind of conversation can help elucidate things for some people. Just as, in terms of background, I've worked as a developer working in um, B2B applications as well as uh, studied AI through Caltech, and I have a degree in philosophy from Fordham University. And I think that's important in this conversation because AI has really opened the realm to having computers do more thinking. And while a lot of the people who work in AI know how to think, um, they don't necessarily know how to think about thinking. And that is essentially what philosophy is. And I've spent a lot of time thinking about thinking. And um, I think people are going kind of the wrong way on this. And so we're coming up against some really misguided paths and the good news is that I think there's solutions that already exist out there and that we're going to see um, taking over the AI conversation more and more. And I want to explain why. So first of all, how is the conversation in AI currently misguided? It's misguided because it's thinking about AI the wrong way. It's starting from the idea of super intelligence and saying, how do we take the thing that we call AI and scale it to that? And so you're starting with AI and building out from there. And I think maybe the reverse is going to need to be the case. So why is that a problem? First of all, artificial intelligence is very, very narrow in what it can do and what it can think. It can do things that are incredible, but it does something incredibly specific. And it doesn't really actually mirror thinking in any meaningful sense. We, we, let's, let's take a look at LL, LLMs, right? When you talk to ChatGPT, it can get very specific and seemingly know and intuit the relationships between things because of the exposure it's had through training on basically all human language, written language data. And so it, it has an intuition as to the relationship between things. And that's why when you speak to it, it can come back with some pretty convincing answers. But I think anyone who has used it, whether they are um, an expert in AI or not, has very frequently come across some problems where it will do things that are completely unintuitive and really kind of ignorant of the relationship between things and do things that are so completely stupid that you kind of are like, well, how intelligent is this AI, right? And, and that really comes from how tailor-made it is to a specific solution. The, the way that people are going about it now, it really relies on the back intuition to be doing the work for it. And, and that the problem with that is that that requires an enormous amount of energy usage. Right now, people think the problem is, oh, that it hasn't built the intuition back through all of the different data points. And in order to keep running it at a bigger and bigger level, you need to have more and more power go into running these sorts of uh, calculations and, and having the, the AI training work at a higher and higher level so that way it can make all those intuitions. And I think that's fundamentally misguided because I don't think, first of all, that will get that will even get to where you want it to go when you are working within such a very specific framework such as text or images. And sure, like we're making the connections between these things and, and you can do that. But like, again, it requires more and more and more and more and more power and creating these cross languages. And, and, and there's obvious constraints with that physical, literal, physical constraints to that. So we're, we're already coming up against that. And so like, I think even just from a, can we even do this right now perspective, like that's an obvious reason why we should maybe have a pivot. AI in doing these sort of intuitions through cross analysis of the data, it understands the relationships between things or understands that there are relationships between things, but it doesn't understand what things are. And so when you look at something like Tesla vision, right? Elon Musk thinks that, oh, humans, they drive by their vision. So cars can just drive by their vision. And that's not correct. Obviously, humans use their vision and a vision is a large component of how you drive. And you suspect that maybe there's some intuitions that can come from having as many images um, over and over and over of successful driving. But the thing is, is that humans don't drive a car based on vision. There's a thing, avoid the thing. No, it's a much more complex task than that. 
as a human, you know what things are. You know human, you know light post, you know stop sign, all of these things. And what are their actual physical characteristics, what they mean in society? A car stopping at a stoplight a million times, and eventually the car will understand you stop at a stoplight. But does the car understand how hard a street lamp is? What a street lamp is that you see the actual image of a street lamp, but what is the impact of that? And how does it affect you? A human has touched one up close. They have other senses besides merely vision, and you create in your mind uh, an understanding of what something is and what its purpose is and what it's useful for. And when you're driving, you're constantly adjudicating different priorities based on what is happening around you. You're like, I need to avoid this, but this is the rule. But in case of this, this supersedes this. And you're constantly juggling these things. And you have to know what the rules are, what things are, and what takes priority in those senses. And that's just not something that you're going to get 100% through merely vision. I mean, you're going to get some of it, but that's the reason why it'll only ever fail until you get to a higher level of coordinating these sorts of details. So you really need to define the things. What is everything? That there's just like no defining limitation to an artificial intelligence. It's just, it's something that has a goal, but it's not in spite of something. Humans have goals, but we also have a body. We are defined within a space. We know who we are. We have a lived experience that we come through with this. We know there's only a limited amount of time that we will be here on this planet. And so we create prioritization of goals based on that. So there are these problems, energy usage, that would result in a lack of understanding of intuition behind all of the things that we understand. And that's why AI makes some really stupid decisions. We need a software system that knows what things are and then adjudicates tasks, adjudicates intelligence tasks based on what things are and the logic between them. There's no guardrails to how AI works. We just hope that it has intuited the information between all of the different data points and it may maybe has and maybe hasn't. We can't rely on maybe it has and maybe it hasn't uh, found the relationship between things and what things are through the, that training process. We have no insight into the training process. We need defined goals and objectives. We need defined things. What that amounts to is an ontology. Now, ontology is a strange word, but it actually comes from philosophy. It comes from the study of being. But within computer science, it is mostly definitional. In, in philosophy, ontology is what is being? What does it mean that things are, right? But in computer science, it is the definition of things. It is there are things. What are they? People are sleeping right now on Palantir and it's ontology. What the ontology does is say, here's the things, here's the relationship between things. And so when you have that as the basis for your complete artificial intelligence package, when you have this is what it is, this is how it works. Then you start adjudicating specific smaller tasks. Let's say you're building a car. Instead of saying like, oh, we noticed that when the arm comes over here, it no, it's saying this is an, a robotic arm. You are taking a piece of copper and putting it over here and bending it into this particular, right? That is what is happening. And so you can tailor make AI solutions to the specific details of that problem and you relay it within a larger system. So we need to define the things and organize the data around the things. This is an arm. This is copper. What is copper? Copper has a weight. Copper has a specific properties. And all of that data needs to be organized in the same way that you have object-oriented programming. We need object-oriented data, object-oriented database organization. And that's basically what the ontology is, is saying that each of the individual pieces come together under an object. You need to have data to organize that way and then the relationships between the actual objects themselves defined so that way you can leverage the data in a clean way. The inference technology that AI allows for gets amplified by the guardrails of definition and logical relationships. So you no longer have to be in this kind of haze of like, maybe it understands what's going on, maybe it doesn't. You create the understanding and from within the context of understanding, 
you leverage that intuitive capability that AI has to do more specific, nuanced work that you really can't get out of pure logical relationships. Ultimately, this means that you have to have less power because you could probably just take the off-the-shelf um, AI tools that come into existence and just start plugging them in to these relationships. And so that's why you look at something like Palantir, which to me is the sleeping giant of AI and it's um, and it's growing and it, it serves to be the sort of data and AI orchestration tool that creates uh, cross capabilities across an entire enterprise. The amount of actual work that goes into cleaning data, organizing data, converting it to a point where you have even just the ability to create an AI, it's so intensive that when you have a systematic platform that allows you to basically organize the data under an ontology that says this is what my organization has, what it does, and what it works with, you already have all of the data cleaned and prepared to be in the place where you can start adjudicating tasks here and there to AI model here, AI model there, taking this and feeding it back into the ontology. And that's when you have the kind of self-perpetuating loop that you're looking for. When you start with the AI and try to build out, you have no idea where that goes. And you have no idea whether it's actually making the relationships that it needs to make. And so then you're like, let's build nuclear power plants. Let's blow this up. Like we already have the abilities to define things. And the thing is, is that like AI has an intuition, but that is not enough for thinking. You need knowledge. You need actual specific knowledge, you need understanding what things are and the logical relationships between between things. Because ultimately, business is a logical relationship between many parts organized towards a specific purpose. And the, the AI is basically the intuitive aspect that can then adjudicate certain details and make decisions. So you have the relationships and then you have the decision making. And that is how it all comes together. So we need to stop thinking as AI is the solution and think about it as a piece of the solution in a broader context than propels us forward. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, let me know if you have any comments. See you next time.